So what's up with secular anti-Mormons like John DeLynn, Jonathan Strader, Zelf on the Shelf, Mormon informant, following Freemason sorcerers dressed in scientist clothing? Is that really the case? I mean, what what are these guys? Uh, why do these guys follow the same Freemasons who are sorcerers and say that science is not born in sorcery? Why do they tell us, why, why do they believe the Freemasons in some things and condemn them in others? What am I talking about? Well, let's take a look at that. Um, I, I mentioned it... Uh, Okay, here we got Zelf on the shelf. You know, they're are these guys are all worshiping what they call science, but they don't know. Do they not know that science came from sorcerers? Do they not know this? Well, hey, they probably grew up, went to the public schools, it got written out of the textbooks. As we examine our history, though, we're going to find out that it's not only in the past, but it's in the present. Whether we're looking to Sir Isaac Newton. Um, <clears throat> or uh, or founders of NASA. We're going to find Freemason sorcerers at the tops of organization after organization. Um, all you got to do is uh, do a little Googling and you're going to find, uh, find plenty of information that um, the people that we that we call our scientists at the heads of these, uh, you know, scientific organizations in the past. I mean, you got your, you, you know, your law of gravity comes from Isaac Newton. But he was a sorcerer. He wrote more on, you know, as much on alchemy and, and, and magic as he did on any other principle. And, and, and he wrote on religion, banking. And in here, you know, I just I put a little, what I put, scientists and sorcerers from Newton to Brown. You know, like Werner von Braun, all of Hitler's uh, top guys, you know, were in like the Tool Society or the Vril Society. Um, everywhere we look, the heads of society are into the occult. They're, they're into Freemasonry. And, uh, yeah, Isaac Newton... Leonardo da Vinci, you know, uh, John D., Edward Kelly, um, um, you know, Mormon doctrine that we've got from uh, spiritualist um, Emanuel Swedenborg. Um, you know, Darwin's, uh, you know, uh, partner basically there. You know, he's a, a sorcerer. All, all these people, Albert Pike told us that that, that, that magic is the all-encompassing science um, where all truth is found. Sounds very similar to what we learned at the lecture in the veil about all truth being, you know, encompassed <laughs> in the Masonic compass sign. All, all of these truths, all, you know, the, the, all, all, our, all of our science comes from these Freemasons, but we're told that Science is the opposite of the spiritual story that we're getting from the religionists. But the religionists and the scientists are all headed up by Freemason sorcerers. And that's what you find out when you really do your homework. So when I, when I look at, 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 you know, at, at these guys saying, science, you know, Science is the right thing. Mormon informant says that. Delph on the Shelf says that. I think Jeremy Rennell probably says that. And Jonathan, I've heard all these guys touting science, but their science comes from occultists. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you guy, you know, founders of NASA even, you're going to find as, uh, as, as occultists. And, uh, you know, like under... Um, under Aleister Crowley. Um, here, here, look, here's, here's a good one right here. Um, Jack Parsons, co-founder of Jet Propulsion Lab, um, so forth, and, and uh, <clears throat> you know, big guy in NASA. He, he was, he, he's a disciple of Aleister Crowley. 
uh, who was also maybe considered fairly fairly scientific, but he was, uh, you know, not only a Freemason, but head of uh, Ordo Templi Orientis, had, you know, totally satanic, and had disciples like Aleister Crowley, excuse me, like Anton LaVey, head of the Church of Satan, um, also high degree Freemason, uh, L. Ron Hubbard, head of Scientology, was one of his disciples there in Los Angeles, um, and so you got Jack Parsons, and then like, all these astronauts, or, you know, these, a lot of these big time astronauts, they're Freemasons, presidents of the United States, they're Freemasons, and the more you read about, you know, the occult and Freemasonry, you know, the high level guys that are lecturers in Freemasonry, they are, they're, they're, you know, talking about other areas of the occult, they're members of the Golden Dawn, uh, the, you know, all you got to do is delve into it. I got to do is start reading uh, Albert Pike's, uh, you know, Morals and Dogma also, and, and you will see how Christianity is governed by Freemasonry, and... Uh, you know, all these guys like Billy, Billy Graham and, and Pat Robertson and, and Benny Hinn and, and Ken, Ken Copeland and Robert Schuller and Oral Roberts and, and Joseph Smith and Charles Taze Russell uh, and L. Ron Hubbard and, you know, you know, Ellen Gould White's not a dude, but, but you know, she was a theosophist. You know, following uh, Alice Bailey and Helena Petrova Blavatsky, they're all occultists, and none of them believe the shit that they peddle to the Christian uh, denominations, including Mormonism. None of these guys believe this stuff. Brigham Young didn't believe believe this stuff. Um, Joseph Smith didn't believe this stuff, and and the people that you call scientists, we've got. You know, I heard Jonathan Streeter saying, "Oh, we've pre you know." People used to believe the Earth was flat, but it's scientifically proven that it's not. Well, I'm not, you know, up on the whole flat Earth thing, but the same Freemasons that give us all the bullshit in every other area of life also mock everyone that doesn't believe that we're on a spinning globe. Dieter Uchtdorf does it. Uh, you know, they do it in all kinds of venues. They do it on commercials. And anytime you have these guys that, they, you know, these are the guys that say, oh, you know, there's no conspiracies. There's nothing, you know, it, all you should do is believe, follow your doctor <laughs> and follow mainstreamism. These are the guys that are heads of all the media and the news and all these big corporations, but they're all occultists. They're all Freemasons. So we get our science from the Freemasons. We get NASA NASA science from the Freemasons, and so if they lie to us about everything else, why should we trust them in religion? Why should we trust them in science? Why should we trust them in, with NASA? Um, I mean, I've just looked at a couple of principles of science and mathematics at this thing, because I thought, well, of course the Earth is round, because... They told me that in school, controlled by the Freemasons, right? Um, so, you know, what's a, what, what's a circle? What is a circle? Well, a circle is something that has a curvature of about 0.63 to 1, right? I mean, if you walk three feet, you're going to be dropping two feet if you were on top of a ball. That's, that's the formula for a circle. That's just all there is to it. It's like the, you know, the, it's like the ratio between a kilometer and a mile. Um, it's, it's the same, very close to this, you know, it's the same ratio. So if you, if you're on a globe, then if you walk 20 feet, you disappear. Um, because that's what a circle is. I mean, if you get like get in a reservoir and, and, you know, you get a certain distance, you know, that you're width from it and you, and you go, you know, a certain number of feet, you're going to find that, yeah, the, you know, the rate at which you disappear has to do, you know, it's two, almost two, two, two thirds, it's 0.63 to one. If you're on a spinning globe and the Earth is spinning at 1,040 miles per hour at the equator, then why would you fly from Lima to Rio? You're flying at 500 miles an hour while the Earth's spinning at 1,000 miles per hour. Or, or trying to, try, you know, try going in the opposite direction. So you're going to Rio to Lima. You know, you're right near the equator, right? So if you're going a thousand miles an hour backwards and 500 miles an hour forwards 
why even bother? Just go up in an air balloon and come down in a few hours, you know? In 23 hours, 22 hours or whatever, you know, how many hours it would be? 21 hours. If we're really spinning on a globe, I mean, do you ever notice that these guys, like, say, okay, we're, um, we're going to have to calculate, you know, the Earth's, uh, you know, speed and its orbit and all this stuff when we're sending, like, rockets into space. But when you've got a plane flying from Indianapolis to Houston, you know, like a three-hour flight or something like that, probably close to that, pretty much north to south, if the Earth is spinning, well, at the equator, they say 1040, just like IRS form, um, you know, in, in your easterly <coughs> direction, is that less, it, 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 you know, at it, it, 33rd degree or something, you know, parallel or something like that? I don't know that a 33rd degree isn't that nice. I mean, maybe it's a different number, but it's not nothing, you know? So, if you're spinning 500 miles an hour there instead of 1,000, whatever it is, if you're going north to south and it took you three hours, then, if it, then, then, then you know, you've got 500 miles an hour going east to west that's happened. So, you're still 1,500 miles off from where you were supposed to land. So, it's true when you're in a rocket, but it's not true when you're a little lower that the Earth is spinning. I mean, do you look at flight patterns and times and, and directions? None of them calculate a spinning globe. Can you imagine if the Earth is actually spinning at a thousand miles an hour east to west and you're landing north to south? You know what's going to happen? You're going to eat shit. That's what's going to happen. You're, if you're landing on something that's spinning, what's going to happen? <laughs> you're going to wipe out big time. None of these, none of these flight patterns. Uh, seem to calculate a spinning globe. Hey, just saying. So, um, <laughs> yeah. You ever notice those things? But no, that's insane because they tell you it's insane and Dieter Uchtdorf laughs at you. But, like I said, I haven't really, you know, studied a bunch of that stuff. I just, I just looked at a couple of scientific principles, common mathematics, and they didn't work. So people can say, well, what about this? Well, what about this? Well, no. Take those two things and, and find a way to freaking make them work. Find a way to make them work. Find a way, you know, that people fly these patterns from the Southern Hemisphere and they have to go, like, go over Alaska to get to L.A. and shit. I mean, you know, have you ever, like, noticed the, the, the flights? <laughs> they, they don't work. Uh, you know, if you... If, I've looked at some of that stuff, and you know, you hear about these emergency landings. Some people come in from like New Zealand to Los Angeles, and they freaking land in Alaska to have a baby or something. How's that happen? Well, it happens great if you look at the you know flat Earth thing on the United Nations uh, emblem. Then it works just great. So, I mean, yeah, these guys actually have uh, said a few things that, I mean, you know crazy if you're not crazy it doesn't matter what what matters is fact check it. it's like jeremy rennell said when he said so they say i'm a deaf retard what difference does it make check my facts and um i have to agree with him on that i don't agree with him on backing down uh on you know the god of the old testament being a psychopath uh like he did in his new stuff he just took the uh anything that offended christians out uh, maybe he just wants Christians to be on his side, so he takes out the portion that basically shows us that God is a psychopath uh, that he had, you know, <clears throat> in his uh, CES letter. And he didn't want the tone to be bad. Oh, the tone. What's wrong with the tone? I thought the tone was fine. Why shouldn't you be pissed off at these people? You know? They're not good men who are just, you know, deceived. These people know from the very freaking beginning that they're that, that they're putting the con job on. Joseph Smith knew what he was doing. Brigham Young was a mass murderer. He knew what he was doing. His Danites were killing people for years and years in the Utah, you know, and Deseret area territory. I mean, Bill Hickman, what did he kill? Like 52 people or something? He was a freaking hitman. The Danites didn't just disappear. You know, like they try to tell you in the Gospel Topics essays and, and all this bullshit. 
you know, they're not urban legend like the Illuminati they say is too. No, these are just people they don't want you to look at. They don't look at the, don't look behind the curtain at the man behind the curtain. Just don't look. If you look, you must be crazy. But the fact is, fact checking is pretty revealing. So why do these guys follow? Why do these guys listen to these Freemasons in in their so-called science? but they reject them with regard to um, contributing to the LDS, you know, temple endowment. Um, and why do they not really talk about the Luciferian aspects of that? They just say, oh, they got the handshakes from them. Because um, the church doesn't want you to talk about Freemasonry. They don't want you to notice how deeply involved the brethren still are in Freemasonry. I mean... Do you get a handshake like this because Dick Cheney is a temple, you know, going Mormon and just happens to be slipping the grip to Gordon Hinckley in public? No, it's pretty obvious just because they're obviously Freemasons. Or else they wouldn't be giving the grip of the Master Mason that you use at the veil and over the altar. Um, I love this picture. Yeah. Okay, um, Mormon artists painting shit that never happened since 1820. Terrific. So what I'm advocating is for people to do your homework and fact check things. Just because these guys tell you people are crazy because they don't follow the mainstream uh, religion of mainstreamism you know, just do whatever your doctor says, believe the scientists, believe NASA, believe your political leaders like Dick and George, like Gordon B. Hinckley told us to do, you know, Lady Liberty, who is she? Is she Columbia, Isis, Diana, you know, the goddess of the new Atlantis? I mean, if you look at the occult roots of America and the occultists leading everything, every industry in the world, why the hell do you trust the ones that say they're your scientists and your educators, your guys that are touted by Mormonism to be people to follow? Except for, of course, the people we need to follow the most are our religious leaders. But they tell us to follow these other guys. So let's look at what Jonathan Streeter put up here. He really... All of these people that I just, you know, gave some shit to over the fact that they're um, following Freemasons anyway do make a lot of nice contributions. Um, they all do. Now, um, Jonathan Streeter... Um, does a lot of really nice work, in my opinion. And, um, gosh darn, I had something that was queued up here. Thinker of thoughts. Um, this Dallin Oaks bullshit. I hate Dallin Oaks. Did I, have I, did I mention that I hate Dallin Oaks? So, um, you know, so Jonathan starts off uh, this one video here. He's talking about, he's got J Dallin Oaks on the PBS show, documentary, saying, uh, it's wrong to criticize leaders. And I'm going to do a Dallin Oaks one because Jonathan put some long talk that Dallin made. And Dallin's just bullshitting us one thing after another as to why we shouldn't believe anybody but the brethren. And uh, so here we got this PBS thing. And he's saying, oh, don't. Uh... Oh, this is one of my videos. Uh, don't. Um don't criticize your leaders no matter what. And Jonathan's pointing out what bullshit that is. That's funny. It's on a PBS thing. Because Oaks was chairman of PB PBS. These guys are just a bunch of, uh, of you know, business executives and corporate lawyers. They're not, they're not some kind of mystical dudes. I mean, so Oaks spends his time just uh, using his lawyer capabilities to tell us all these examples that they, they use is they always love to use these, uh, you know, these little, I don't know what you want to call them, parables or something. They, they give these, you know, the, the, these examples that are like uh, false platforms. 
And uh, some of them, they mix in some truth, which Dallin says is the way the devil does it. Oh, I love when Dieter goes, the devils have to get us, you know, um, and to deceive us. But these guys, uh, <laughs> these guys act like, like there's no spiritual world in some things. And, in, you know, they, they believed in, in, they, they believed in, you know, gift of tongues and Satanists do gift of tongues, you know, but now Mormonism doesn't, but they used to do it. And now it's just, you know, it's just, you know, missionaries learning a, le learning a language, but this is channeling. And if you see all these, all, all these, you know, people now, all these Mormon, um, you know, anti-Mormon, uh, secularist people, you say it's all about science and science has nothing to do with the spiritual world. But that's not the truth at all. That's not where these scientific theories even came from. All of this stuff came from people who were spiritualists and occultists and sorcerers. But they hide that. They take it out of our, our books because the media and the Disney company and the educational system, indoctrination system, is purposely separating it from us. Isn't it funny that all the peons at the bottom are saying, believe the scientists who tell us, you know, that there's no spiritual world, but all the people at the top that are in positions of power ruling us, they are occultists, and they do practice magic. Isn't it funny how, like, in the freaking nut houses, the first thing the last people was, do you see things other people don't see? Do you hear things other people don't hear? Because if you do, you're hallucinating. And half the people they got there are Christians, which believe all the, which go to, you know, the church on Sunday and, 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 and you know, speak in tongues and, uh, and, and all this stuff. I mean, the hypocrisy of, of, of this, the, the paradox, we're, we're looking at, we, we listen to people who tell us there's nothing of an invisible world who believe in it and practice it themselves and peddle religions with beliefs that they don't believe, but that contradict what they say is their science. I challenge anybody to research the occult backgrounds of the presidents of the church, the presidents of the United States, of the leaders of industry. Look at our judicial system. It's just filled with a with with these massive, ridiculous contradictions. <clears throat> do we have a, a separation of church and state? What do you do when you go into court? You swear on a Bible. What does it say in the Bible about swearing? It says, "Don't swear. Don't swear on anything. Don't swear on the earth, for it's you know God's footstool. All this stuff. Don't swear in your head." But swear on the Bible that tells you not to swear. I mean, you can find it in the books of Matthew and the books of James. In the book of James. And what's the first thing they do? They make you wear, you raise your arm to the Masonic square and swear on the Bible that says not to swear. Okay. So where does the authority come for the judicial system? From the temple. That's where it comes from. It comes from the temple bar in the city. London, in the inner city of London, you know, the financial district, the house of inns. If you look, you'll trace all this authority to, to spiritual uh, occult uh, religions. That's where you will find all of this. If you look at the founding fathers of the United States, they're touted as Christians, but that's bullshit. Okay, everybody knows that George Washington was a Freemason, but, you know, what about Benjamin Franklin and the Hellfire Club, you know, and all this stuff with the prostitutes and human sacrifice and all this bullshit that they do, like in Paris and in London, underneath the, you know, certain buildings that serve as temples, just like the Capitol or the, you know, and the White House and, 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 and look at the Washington, D.C. layout, look at, you know, where you find the Masonic Temple there. Uh, look! Look at all the, how the in the look at the layout of all these things in the Pentagon. Why is it a Pentagon? The inside of a pentagram. I mean, and if you the, every, look at the obelisk, 
you know, 666, you know, inches on each side for the Washington phallic symbol memorial, uh, you know, of the Egyptian sun god. 666 inches on each side, 6,666 inches tall. <laughs> How much of this stuff do you have to really, you know, and then look at George Washington deified viewing the Baphomet pose on the roof painted by a Jesuit. Now the roof, the ceiling of the Capitol building. What does Capitol mean, you know, from Capitol Hill? And, and that's all, you know, <laughs> that's all occult religion from... You know, from the old world, everything the it doesn't say capital; it says capital. In case you haven't noticed, everything's based in the occult in this country. The, let's look at that uh, poem that I channeled uh, on Halloween morning. Ah, uh, first let's take a peek here at this. Uh, video um, scrolling through my videos here Yeah, I do focus on Freemasonry and the occult just a little bit. Okay, here we go. Mormonism's Babylonian mystery school roots and America's manifest destiny is the new Atlantis. All right, so this was Halloween morning in the Basis dark. I woke up and this poem came to me. So, yeah, it just came to me. I didn't like sit here and just try to make stuff up. It just flowed to me. So, all right, what did I write here? Published October 31st, 2017, just before the massacre in New York. Considering the occult roots of America, is her manifest destiny the new Atlantis? Well, that's what Manly P. Hall taught, isn't it? Here's the poem that came to me. Her unhallowed hand, okay, I suppose it's nice if we're looking at, you know, this. You know, it's, 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 it's the, you know, it's the Statue of Liberty, okay? That's what we're talking about. Her unhallowed hand holding Lucifer's light, she stands in the bay as the queen of the night, a mother of gods from ages of old. In Columbia's hand, the times are foretold. In Liberty's name by Freemasons given, Desolation she brings to all nations under heaven. She's Diana to some and Isis to others, a torch in her hand and Lilith her mother. As Venus she rises in dawn's early light, or Atlantis she watches, her goal is in sight. An order of ages long lost in the past, it's dawn she now heralds in triumph at last. So that just kind of flowed to me, you know? Um, nothing spooky about that, huh? And uh, there it is. So um, a few hours later, I guess they were reporting the massacre that happened there. I don't know if there's any oddness to that coincidence. It was like four in the morning this was given to me. I just woke up and then... And, and, the words came to me. I didn't have any plan to do that, but that's just the way that things happen. And uh, there's no spiritual world, no. Nothing of the sort. So all these Freemasons running things believe in it. They practice magic, the guys at the top of the top of the food chain do, but they tell us not to believe in it. And here's George Washington in his Baphomet pose. Okay. There he is. So we can click on him. There it is. See, look at that. Um, temple preparation here. The sacredness. Yeah, so that was George Washington. And uh, he's in the Baphomet pose there. So, 
once again uh, challenged with the uh, logistics of this this is a pose that you see in the temple this is a token isn't it and sometimes they reverse it okay he's doing the reverse the mirror image of Baphomet the god of Freemasonry an androgynous satanic god um, so it's perfectly normal for us to have this stuff in the temple because we got it from Freemason occultists and that's the way your loving Heavenly Father wants you to have all the secret handshakes and signs and tokens and shit that he will require St. Peter to ask you for at the pearly frickin' gates. You're kidding me, right? No, but that's the kind of, that's actually what we believe. That's actually what we were taught to believe. Is that nuts? Just a little bit, huh? Yeah, so you gotta have secret handshakes to be able to get into heaven because Joseph Smith said so and Brigham Young said so. That's why you gotta know that the, the secret handshakes of Satanists and Luciferians who practice human frickin' sacrifice in order to get into heaven because that's what the prophet Joseph Smith taught. And we better believe him because, you know, he was walking the walk, wasn't he? I mean, he said he'd be monogamous and faithful to his wife, didn't he? Isn't that the covenant he had to make? But no, God told him, screw that. You need to be, you need to be like fertilizing all these other girls. You can start with your maid in the barn during breakfast time. When Emma's making breakfast, you can go out and say you're going to get some chicken eggs or something. And, you know, you took a little too long, got caught. But that's what Heavenly Father wants you to do. Because he wants you to have illegitimate children, uh, you know, being born after their teenage mothers thrown out on the street and brought up outside the church because that makes so much sense, right? <clears throat> really, do you ever try to, to, to stay on one solid platform and make actually any of this stuff make sense? The excuses that they come up, you know, Fanny Alger impregnated by Holy Joe, by Frisky Joe when she's like 16, and that's the Lord's commandment, to violate the covenant that he made with Emma. Okay, that makes all kinds of sense. What really makes sense is when you figure out that these guys are a bunch of, you know, hucksters running organized crime. That's what makes sense when you, when you read what Joseph H. Jackson wrote in his sworn testimony about what Joseph Smith was doing in Nauvoo, not just with a counterfeiting, but with a spiritual wife system exploiting all these women, and with the Danite murder squads milking the Gentiles, because that's what Heavenly Father wants you to do. I mean, the Israelites got to plunder the Egyptians on the way out, so God wants you to just go rip off everything from your Missourian neighbors, you know, and then burn down their cities, towns, rob their, rob their markets and bring it to the bishop's storehouse, the storehouse of the Lord. Okay, not that there weren't some Missourians that did some bad things. Everybody did some bad things, but the Danites were satanic. And this is a Freemasonic style organization same types of oaths, death oaths, the same ones that Joseph Smith brought into the temple, but we don't have them now, so it's okay, it's all uplifting, that's what Allie Everts thinks, because she doesn't know any better, she's just a nice girl that believes the bullshit that her leaders tell her, but you gotta just fact check these guys, fact check the gospel topics essays, notice that they lie and contradict LDS scripture, Notice that Joseph Smith changed his theology multiple times. Notice that the Book of Mormon tells you you're going to burn in hell for eternity. But the Doctrine and Covenant says, Ah, God was just fucking kidding. He didn't mean by forever. He just said eternal because he's eternal. So you get out of hell after a couple of thousand years. That's more light and knowledge. Every time we change something and say, Here's something new, but it contradicts what was in the Book of Mormon, you're basically admitting that Joseph Smith lied. 
Just like he lied when he said that the book of Abraham's scrolls were written by the hand of Abraham. They admit that he lied now, but they don't use the word lied. They say, well, actually the Lord inspired him when he was looking at these things. How can you inspire a liar? Well, it rhymes, liar, inspire, I don't know. We're, how do you trust these guys after you know they've lied to you time after time after time? Jesus tells us in the Book of Mormon, Ether, Chapter 3, that the brother of Jared's the first guy that's ever seen him. And he says, the reason is that no one's ever had enough faith. But it's 1,100 years after the timeline, Moses, Chapter 7, when he does the same shit with Enoch. And Enoch only has enough faith to move mountains and rivers and talk to him face to face. But, no. That just didn't happen, right? All you gotta do is fact check this stuff. It's just one pile of shit after another. I mean, how can people be so mind washed as to not notice that they get lie after lie after lie after lie? How many times you gotta look at the book of Abraham and say, okay, so it's just an Egyptian funerary text. So God inspired him to tell you all this other bullshit that's complete lies too? Like that. Pharaoh means, you know, king of royal birth when it doesn't, and that Egypt means that which is forbidden, which it didn't, and it didn't even, that word didn't even exist at the time, you know, and I, I mean, and, and Jehovah's in there, who was invented by a, you know, a Catholic monk who was an occultist 3,300 years later, how can, how can Jehovah be there when he doesn't even exist, how can he be in the Mormon temple? endowment when he didn't exist he's invented by a, a an occultist monk from the church of the devil can you say anachronism i don't know how do intelligent people like not see this shit jesus takes the children one by one and blesses them each the children of 2000 dudes plus their wives and he blesses them, taking them individually one by one and giving them children's blessings. In about what sounds like about, you know, less than an hour in that rendition in 3rd Nephi. Do you need a calculator to figure out that's complete, complete bullshit and completely impossible? The sun gets its <coughs> it through some magic medium from Kolob. Okay, that's in the facsimiles in the book of Abraham. You're kidding, right? Abraham chapter 1 refers to the facsimiles, which were invented, you know, near the, near the current era. And have nothing at all to do with what Joseph Smith said they did. And last of all, of course, he's got Elohim. Elohim, God the Father, on his throne, talking about the priesthood, sticking his wang in Abraham's face without his pants on. Your God is a gay porn star. Abraham, facsimile 2, figure 7. Joe says that's God the Father. That's what Frisky Joe said. That's your frisky heavenly father with his pants off in a completely perverted pose, sticking his equipment in Abraham's face. And Abraham's like freaking out. He's got his hands up like, don't shoot. Look at it. I'm not making this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. But that's your holy heavenly father. Your loving heavenly father that just burns his children alive or drowns them all whenever he gets pissed off and has group activities for murdering them if they don't keep the Sabbath holy enough by worshiping him all day in the camp of Moses. This is your loving Heavenly Father. None of this makes any sense. Maybe that's part of it. Is this they just keep you changing changing it from one thing to the next so you can't figure out what the hell is going on because it confuses the mind. It confuses the mind to give all these all, all these, you know, conflicting ideas constantly. It's like God so large he fills the universe, but he's so small he can dwell in your heart. He's so loving he 
he, he sends bread across town with the visiting teachers, but he burns everybody alive, including the children, just because their parents didn't worship the right religion, worship in the right way in the right religion. But he wants the Americans to have freedom of religion so the gospel can be restored. But whenever the gospel is on the earth, he just, you know, tells the Israelites to kill everybody who doesn't believe what they believe. Um, okay. So, God is completely fucking insane. That's what I get from that. And we must be if we believe in him. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.